hello and welcome to a new video today I'm going to be showing you some tips on how to use these real brush markers which have been very kindly sent to me by Arteza and everything that I use in the video I'm gonna link below in the video description so the pack that came in wasn't really convenient to keep them in because they were just in plastic trays so I've actually transferred mine to one of these pencil cases so if you don't know what brush, real brush markers are, it's basically like an ink marker only it has a brush on the end. So you're actually painting the ink onto the paper. And these are water based as well so they're water soluble. It's not the alcohol ink that you would find like in a Copic marker. The first tip that I'm going to give you is about paper. To get the best results from these brush pens you really need a paper that will allow you to easily blend them together so some papers will allow you to blend easily and some won't I found that this Cotman watercolour paper works absolutely excellent with these brush pens so I'll show you the difference between a paper that works well and a paper that doesn't so this is an example of a paper that doesn't work well with these I've put some colour down I've left it to dry and then I'm going in with some water and I'm going to try and blend it out and as you can see it doesn't really blend very well it's leaving a harsh line you can use that paper if you just want to use layering techniques but it's just not very good for blending the best paper to use for blending will behave like this the, the, the colour will almost completely reactivate like that so you can see the difference now if you want to use these in colouring books such as this one colouring book paper isn't normally very good so a tip for colouring books and my regular viewers will already know this because I've showed this in lots of other videos if you paint a couple of layers of this satin glazing liquid onto the page the markers will blend like an absolute dream and I'll show you an example so there's two layers on this page so I'll use that same colour just leave that to dry for a couple of minutes and as you can see that just melts absolutely beautifully and you can easily manipulate the paint after you've re-wet it okay so I'm just going to start with the most basic method of just colouring a flat area with them so so it's best just to colour on an angle like this you don't want to be too upright and you don't want to be too flat this way And if you just go quite swiftly from side to side you can get a nice even finish okay so that's just painting basic flat color the only the only thing is the colors in the pens are so strong well it just looks a little bit flat and the colors just a little bit dense so you can actually make the colour a little bit softer and lighter if you wet the paper first. So I'm just going to wet this with one of these aqua brushes. Now what you don't want to do is absolutely saturate the paper. It needs to be just damp. If the paper's too wet, the brush tip will just suck up the ink. And I'll show you an example. So I'll make sure there's plenty of water on there so that's probably too much water when it's really shiny like that so when I go to paint in there it's not letting much ink out and if you can see the tip is gone white because it's sucked up the water I mean that's okay if you want a nice light colour I suppose you could do that but you really need to be able to control the amount of water you use to get the effect that you want so I'm just gonna wet this side but I just want it to be slightly damp 
Okay, so there's no shine on that. It's, it's just got a very, very dull shine. And you can see how that's a lovely in-between colour. It's not too dark. And it's not too light. Another way to use water is to make a blended edge. So I'll show you what I mean. I'll start painting the stalk of this mushroom. And then I'll get the water brush. And I'll just activate the edge and then drag it over. So I've got a nice blended edge there. So it's a fairly easy way to shade. And then you can go in and add a little bit more colour. If you want that a little bit darker at the edge. Okay, so that's how to get a blended edge with water. So another way to get a blended edge is to actually put the ink on some plastic so I've just got one of these plastic sheets that you can buy from Ranger so I've just put some of the ink on there and then I'm gonna soak that ink up with the aqua brush I'm just gonna make sure it hasn't got too much water in the end Get the ink on the end of the brush and then I'm going to make it darker to this side so I'll just start painting on this side and then as I go over it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. So that makes a lovely gradient, it's really easy to do and then I'm just going to go in and make it just a little bit darker over to this side just add a little bit of shading over the top just like that you can also just blend directly with two colours if you want to just blend two colours together side by side I've got a dark and a light colour and I'm going to paint one side of this pot dark and I'm then I'm going to blend that out with the lighter colour I'll just do that again. Shaded part first. And then just pull that out to blend the two colours together. Okay, next I'm going to paint the leaves on this plant, but I'm wetting the paper first because I want the colour to be nice and soft. And I'm just going to paint them all with this lovely light green colour. So I'm just going to let that completely dry and then layer some colour over the top. Okay, so that's dry and I'm going to go in with this darker green colour to add some shading. So I'm just going to paint it where I want the darkest area. And then I'm going to use the original colour to just blend that out a little bit. I'm 
I'm leaving some lighter bits just for highlights. And then I'm going to just a, a tiny little bit more darkness at the very bottom by just layering this dark green in the very, very bottom areas. Another technique you can do is to go back in with some water and lift out some colour to add some highlighted areas. So I've got a tissue and the water brush and I'm just going to activate a little bit of that towards the middle, kind of push the colour out towards the edges like this and then get the tissue and lift a little bit out. So that's the lifting out technique, a well-known technique for watercolour. So here I'm using the gradient technique again where you get a little bit of ink on the end of the brush. I'm putting it on the bottom edge about halfway up then I'm wiping the ink out of the brush with the tissue and then I'm blending the top half just with water. So back to the mushroom I'm going to add, so I'm just wetting the underside with some water from the aqua brush. Okay so that is, as you can see, really shiny, too much water. So I'm going to soak some of that back up and then I'm colouring it in this in a grey colour. But while it's still wet I'm going in with a darker brown to add some shading. It's just so much easier if the paper's slightly damp. I'm going to add some more water. Because it's drying out fast and I want to blend it a little bit more. So I'm just adding darker and darker colours for some shading. Another way to blend is to do like a layer blend so if we colour one side in this colour blend it out with the water till it's almost clear at the other side let that completely dry. Now that that's dry we'll add in a second colour on this side and then just blend that out the opposite way. And then you've got a lovely gradient. So for the soil I'm just colouring in this brown. And then while it's still wet, I'm just going to drop in some black dots and just let them blend in so it looks like, like kind of uneven soil.
and then using this orange colour I'm just adding a shadow line underneath all of those little ridges in the pot and I'm just layering that over the top of the other colours Okay, another thing you can do is actually make new colours with the colours you already have. Now, I know you might think, well, if you had a 96 pack, why would you need to make more colours? But the thing is, all these colours are pretty highly saturated, but sometimes you need some muted colours. So, for example, this green is really, really bright. So, to tone it down, all you need to do is paint some onto your plastic then using a colour that is opposite green on the colouring wheel in this in this case it's red so we've got the green and we've got the red so if we get the green on the end of the brush and just a little touch of the red we've made a, a new green and it's a much more neutral green So I'll do that again so we've got a really really bright orange and we maybe want a little bit more of a pumpkin colour like just more of a darker muted orange so we would mix that with a little bit of blue because blue is opposite orange on the colour wheel so I'll just put a little bit of blue beside Mix a little bit of that in with the orange and then we've got a much darker muted orange of course you don't have to use the water brush for this if you used a normal paintbrush it would be a lot more saturated so here we've got a really bright purple but we don't want it that saturated so because yellow is opposite purple on the colour wheel we'll just add a little bit of yellow to it mix that up and it's really toned down that brightness okay so the next thing i'm doing is i'm adding some shaded areas while the first colour is still wet just so that it blends in nice and easy just like that so you've got to do it really quickly and I'm putting quite a bit down so that it's wetting the paper so I'm going over it so it's nice and wet and then just add a little bit of a darker colour and it just goes on nice and soft with no harsh edges Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please give me a like and subscribe if you have. And please don't forget to hit the bell icon and then you can be notified when I upload any new videos.